All right, here with Patty Pimlet in London. Do you feel like uh, you're not you're not the official headliner? You, you come in feeling like you're headlining this card. I'm the people's main event, lad. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I know that. I, I think everyone knows that by the the way everyone's talking online and in person. And you will see that at the official way and at the well the ceremonial way ins. Mm -hmm. You will see that when I get the loudest cheer out of everyone. You, you, I mean, you always said that you pictured all of this, and so you know none of it's coming as a surprise. Like, is is this about how you pictured it? Like every step of the way, is it just, is yeah. it about what you expected? This is everything I expected, lad. That's why when people say to me, "Oh, what's it like being famous? What's it like being a celebrity?" I'm like, I'm just the same person, lad. Nothing's changed me. Nothing in my life has changed. I still go to the same gym every day. Still walk my dog. Still sit in the house with my bed. You know what I mean? I don't. Nothing's different, lad. I'm still the same kid. That's wild. That it, I mean, it, it's it's admirable that no, nothing would change you, that you would remain the same person. But I gotta believe, like, just the circumstances of your life, like, like, would start to change. Have you felt that yet? Um, it, it's weird when you're walking down Times Square and people are stopping you and asking you for photos, yeah. and you're in a restaurant in San Diego, and someone comes over and asks you for a photo, stuff like that's weird. But I've been getting asked for pictures in Liverpool for years, since the first ever time I said scousers don't get knocked out. I've been getting asked for pictures on the regular in Liverpool, yeah. so it's it's normal to me getting asked for pictures. I'll never say no to anyone because I'd hate if I asked someone for a picture and they said no to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I've, I'll never say no to anyone as long as they're not rude. Yeah. But I've just took it in my stride, lad. This is not new to me. I, it just the glove fits. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And the scouser uh, can't get knocked out. That was from your UFC fight, correct? No, I said that in 2016. Oh, you said that way back then? I said that on Cage Warriors in 2016 when I beat Teddy Vada. Mm -hmm. Wait, like, it seems like it does just come naturally, like these viral moments of yours, but do you ever kind of give some, some thought to it that, like, people expect this at now, and, like, if you want your career to get, you know, to, to, the, to where you want it to be, which is to rival, you know, Conor McGregor's, you need, like, viral moments. Like, do you, do you think about that, or did it just happen? Nah, it just happens. Like, I wouldn't have said that last time if Bisbee wouldn't have said, oh, you nearly got knocked out. Yeah. That's the whole reason I come back and said that. Yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't have said that otherwise. And then, like, everyone's like, when I see some people, like, how do you like me now? Like, that just came on in yeah. the apex. Yeah. So I just started singing it. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like, the things just happen, lad, circumstance, and I go viral off it. Yeah. I know it's gonna happen again on Saturday night. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't know what's gonna be, but yeah, it's, I don't know what's gonna be, but something's gonna happen like that. Therefore, and I'll go viral again. Yeah. Speaking of Bisping in that fight, I rewatched it recently. You know, in anticipation of watching this one. What did you think of the commentary during that fight? I'm getting dogged, aren't I, on the commentary <laughs> lad, all the way through? A little bit. I, I, I mean, because I had watched it in Vegas, so I don't think I had ever actually listened to them. Yeah, I've, I've, and no, they weren't like being mean to you, but yeah, they Bisping and, and DC were talking about some like potential mistakes that you were Yeah, making. they were just going um, go, like going against me, to be honest, a lot of things. I could hear them as well. And that's why I'm one, at one point, like, I heard DC go like, oh, he's losing this round. I was like, am I? Yeah. Am I losing this round? Sound. I just bit down on my gummy and started going on him. I think I tried to take him down, then when we got straight back up, I, I just went at him and started throwing punches. And I knew I broke him, you know what I mean? Like, he hit me with his biggest shot, and I stood there. Mm -hmm. That's why he took me down. Like, my takedown defence in the UFC is 0%, I think. <laughs> because he hit me with a big shot, and I thought, yeah, come ahead, bit down on my gummy, started throwing punches, I thought, we're going to have a firefight here. And then he shot in. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect it at all. You know what I mean? I did not expect him to shoot in. So he took me down. I was like, oh my God, I've just been sucked down. <laughs> the first ever takedown attempt on me in the UFC and I've been sucked down. What am I doing? What's going on here? Yeah. So that infuriated me even a bit more. And then obviously I could hear DC and Bisbon and that talking. And then I just like thought, yeah, this is, I'm biting down on my gummy now and I'm walking forward and I'm putting it on him. Huh. Uh, one particular thing that I remember them saying is, do you remember the, hearing them say that his, his chin is up? Um, everyone said that about me for years, lad. Yeah. I've had nine amateur fights and 20 pro fights and for years everyone's always said, oh, he's got his chin up, he's got his chin up. But I've never been knocked out mm -hmm. and I never will be. You know what I mean? I've never been knocked out when I was doing 19-pound weight cuts overnight and 17-pound weight cuts overnight for featherweight, getting it with big shots and big flying knees off Nad Armani and Julian Rosa. Mm -hmm. And I, they, they didn't phase me then when I was doing big weight cuts. I think any shot now was going to phase me at all. When I'm, I've got ten pounds to lose now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, 
the Scousers don't get knocked out thing could turn me into a proper meme over the years <laughs> if I do end up getting knocked out, you yeah. know what I mean? But that's the risk we take there, that that's what we... And I, be, I believe, thoroughly believe in my chin, lad. Mm. I have been working on keeping my chin down a bit, but I know when I get into a firefight, it'll stick back up. <laughs> and I'm not asked because he can hit me with whatever shot he wants, I'm not going down. Yeah. When you have like an, a week like this, and you basically said that you know that these things don't go through your head, but like I've heard you mention like what Dublin and Connor did for his career. You know, it, it is like a career building thing. It's like to see how someone's you know fans in their country support them. That can be like a real kind of powerful thing on its own. Um, does that does that make it so that like you can't just just win this fight? Like this week has to be more than that. Like it has to be like a Something, something bigger than just your average win. The win's the most important thing, like, but he doesn't get out the first round anyway. He just doesn't. Yeah. It's gonna be a spectacular fight no matter what, because I'm gonna come out and just dominate him. I mean, you know, no matter where the fight is, I, I'm gonna dominate him. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact I am. And the best make that arena go black, lad. Before I walk out, lad, all them lights best go off, lad. And then my song comes on because he's never gonna have seen nothing like it. I really, really hope Dana comes, lad. I hope Dana's here because... He's coming. He's coming. Yes. There we go. He's going to get goosebumps. He's going to be like, oh my God, this is the second coming of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's going to be like, what is going on here when I walk out, lad? No one's going to have seen nothing like it. Why is it like that? How have you how have you created that? Just the song that I use and the energy that I bring. Like, we've never seen nothing like it, lad. You know, I love rap music, lad. I always listen to rap music, but... I, I, sit, I change my song to a dance tune and if I, cause I used to always listen to dance songs, I've been to like festivals like Tomorrowland and stuff like that and mm -hmm. I always used to listen to that type of music and I don't really listen to it that much anymore but nothing gets me going like my song and nothing gets the crowd going like my song, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, it's, it's special, like the only thing I can say like is if you've been there in the Echo Arena that's the only way people would know. Mm -hmm. And this is on like a three times bigger scale. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, I can't wait to walk out, lad. I've won the fight before I get in the cage. Yeah. He's not going to know what's hit him. He's going to be like, oh my God, what is going on here? He's never fought this high up on a card. I'm used to it. I've main evented before. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. He's never fought in someone's backyard like this with that many people going bananas. And it's not even my backyard. It's not even Liverpool. This is a four and a half hour drive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the, the, the arena's gonna be like half scousers. Yeah. Have you ever gone into a fight thinking like, because you just said, I'm gonna dominate him, he's not gonna get out of the first round. Do you think that about pretty much every one of your The only fights where I haven't in recent memory are the ones I've lost. Really? Where I've went in with injuries or doing a big crazy weight cut. Mm. They're the only fights I've ever went into nervous. Mm. I've always said, what's the point in being nervous when you know you're gonna win? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, people keep saying to me this week, oh, the pressure you put on yourself. I don't feel pressure, lad. Mm -hmm. but like, you could say pressure's my middle name. It doesn't phase me at all. I really don't mind. People are like, oh, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. You're doing this, you're doing that. This is just me, lad. I can't help it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm the way I am. Are you, how, how much uh, have you been able to... Because I know you got a little big, and you said that you're not gonna you're not gonna do that moving forward. You're gonna try to keep your weight lower after these fights. It seemed like you were, you got you got up a little bit, but then, then oh the yeah, weight, I did, and I'm gonna off. do it again. You I'll be honest, there. Yeah, yeah. like, no, what's funny? <laughs> I said in, I've said in so many previous fights. Oh, after this fight, I'm gonna keep me weight down. I'm gonna keep me weight down. It's the worst liar fight I can ever make. <laughs> it is for me anyway. Yeah. So this fight, I'm just I'm getting fat. Yeah. I've done a 12 week camp for this. I've. I haven't had a chocolate bar or a can of cherry coke for like 12 weeks, lad. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna get fat because by the time Wednesday comes round after the fight, I'll be 84 kilo again. Mm. I'll be like 185 again. Yeah. Just because my appetite's that big. Yeah. Like even now I could go and sit down <laughs> and sit in an all-you-can-eat and have about 12 plates. Yeah. So I'm not messing, lad. Like, you're gonna see it on my vlogs, lad, because I'm gonna... My vlogs the next few weeks are just going to be me eating food. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious. On my TikTok, I'm going to have to start mm -hmm. doing like food reviews mm -hmm. because I'm proper obsessed with food. Yeah. I, I think that's what this dieting does to you. I am obsessed with food. Like I've said before, if I wasn't a fighter, I'd be a diabetic. Yeah. Um, so you kind of given up on that? You just accepted it? This one, and I am not have accepted it. I think I'm just going to get fat again for a bit. Yeah. But I know for a fact I can get... I can, 
I can make weight on six to eight weeks notice, even when I'm that fat. Mm -hmm. Well, I think like uh, some people see that and they're just like, well, are, are you still in the gym? Are you improving? Like yeah. how much of a better fighter are you now than you were six months ago? This was kind of a longer layoff. It for, was, for you. This, but this version of me kills six months version ago of me. Mm -hmm. This version of me finishes that version of me in two rounds. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? 100%. Mm -hmm. I've done a little bit of training in San Diego with Jay flowing in Studio 540 and stuff like that. And, my striking's come on a ridiculous amount of being trained in Taekwondo and everything like that. And oh, I just can't wait to put on a show for everyone, lad. I might get fat, but I still train every day. Yeah. No and matter what, I still train. And even when I'm fat, I still train. Well, I think people I think it's hysterical that you'll just refer to yourself as, as fat. And it makes yeah. you, it makes I you relatable. Like, I don't care, lad. I look like Chris Griffin when I get fat. I'm not bothered what anyone says. You know what I mean? People can say what they like about me. When I turn up on fight night, I'm in better shape than anyone. Yep. Yeah. Well, last thing for you, and, and you're only one fighting in your UFC career, so it's like, I, I can't really say like, oh, you don't do this because you've only had one opportunity to do it. But you, you've kind of gone the route of saying, um, I'm not going to call anybody out. Like, they don't, I, they don't need me to call. Like, they no. need to call me out. But, you know, we have seen that um, with, with fighters who are big. Like, like you, can, you can take control a little bit of your own destiny by, by calling someone out. Do you think that'll change at some point? Do you think you will make it, make it be known that, like, I want to fight this guy? Um, probably not, lad. I don't need to mention anyone's name. They all talk about me. The only person I'm gonna call out after this fight is Mark Zuckerberg, lad. He's getting told. When they see you, it's on. Is, is who's that? Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> for taking my Instagram oh, account Mark's again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's, I'm, I, I don't need to call anyone out on the UFC roster, lad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like everyone talks about me. Mm -hmm. It's it's that simple. I genuinely don't need to mention anyone's name. Yeah. I've got more hype around me than anyone on the roster. And I guess that would include uh, your your buddy who who you ran into yesterday. Who, Mr. Hand Sanitizer? Yes. Yeah, and I'll never refer to him as his name again. That's Mr. Hand Sanitizer, lad. He's what? using my name for clicks, lad. For clickbait and to... You think that's what it is? That's all it is, lad. He's trying to use my name for, for a bit of fame, a bit of clickbait. Mm -hmm. Try and spice things up for him because no one knows who he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When, it was, when I shared it on Twitter, everyone was like, who's he? Mm -hmm. Who's that? Yeah. No one knows who he is, lad. He yeah. hasn't even got a blue tick on Twitter. He's a bum. So you don't see, him, you don't see yourself fighting him? No, he's a crab, yeah. lad. He's going to get knocked out by Jai. My man Jai's going to put him asleep mm -hmm. and then he's going to go crawl him back to featherweight, lad. He's got little man syndrome, that's what it is. Mm. He's like five foot seven. So when he see me, SD, and he come over and dad say something, I said, what's happening, lad? Like, he tried to swing a slap at me. Mm -hmm. So I step back and bounce something off his head. Hand sanitizer. Head sanitizer, <laughs> as you could say. It's my version of telling him you need a bath because he's stunk